You know, I'm always looking for a good lab dealing with the mole concept, especially one where the students are required to count out atoms by weighing, but then to react them with maybe another kind of atom and then see if the results make sense. This is a kind of a lab I call a target lab because the students are really going to be graded on how closely their predicted final answer is to the actual final answer, not by me, but as judged by the electronic balance. Let me explain. They start this lab by weighing an empty beaker and recording that mass. This one, 109.62 grams. They then get a piece of zinc metal. And because this is also a lesson in kinetics, we know that it's going to react faster if they increase the surface area. So they're instructed to cut it up into small pieces. Okay, little strips like that that'll help the reaction go faster. Then to weigh that, and that's 110.65 grams. They write that down. And now the reaction. Some three molar HCl. And they add, it doesn't really matter as long as they don't use too little. They add about maybe 50 milliliters of that. And right away they can observe a reaction. Now, I'm going to put this here so you can see that reaction better. Little bubbles of hydrogen gas forming. Okay? Now, they take time out now as that reacts and it takes about five, ten minutes to react. I've got one already done over there though. Once it's done reacting, they put it on a hot plate already turned on to full and they're going to boil off not only all the water because when you have three molar HCl you have mostly water there, but also any extra HCl. And it's because we're having HCl being boiled off just a little bit, we want to definitely have the fume hood on and do this under the fume hood. So we're going to boil this down and during that time, first the, the time delay while they're um, laying the HCl and the zinc react, but then also the time delay as the liquid's boiled off, they have time to do the calculations. Here's what the calculations entail. I didn't take the exact mass there, but let's just see. We started with uh, 1.00 grams of zinc. If you subtracted the beaker from the beaker in the zinc. Besides, it's not going to work out anyway because I switched beakers here. So this is just by way of example. The first question is, how many atoms of zinc were put in the beaker? Okay. So I want to see their work in factor label form. That's what we've been teaching. We go from grams of zinc to moles of zinc, one mole of zinc. We consult the periodic table. They should know that's where these are listed. 65.409. And of course, if I'm going to atoms, one mole of zinc, good old 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay? They do that calculation and for here we'll give you one divided by 65.409 and then times 6.02 EE23. There were 9.20 times 10 to the 21st atoms of zinc in there. Next question. How many atoms of chlorine reacted with it if the product being formed is zinc chloride? I haven't taught them stoichiometry at this point or balanced equations, but they have learned about balancing charges within a compound. And they know that zinc chloride is not just ZNCl, it's ZNCl2. Still they wrestle with this. I've got that many atoms of zinc. It's forming a compound ZNCl2. So how many atoms of chlorine would come on board inside the beaker to combine with that zinc? Well, the brighter students just kind of figure this out on their own. Others maybe need a little help. 
but certainly one atom of zinc would react with two atoms of chlorine. A hundred atoms of zinc would react with 200 atoms of chlorine. A million would react with two million, so this would react with twice as much. So you simply take this, multiply it by two. I can see you're going to get 1.84 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of chlorine. I think I did that correctly. And the final question that they could ask, let me check on my little boiling off the water there still, just making sure. So how much is it going to weigh now? How much is your beaker going to weigh? And they have to think about it. Well, what's in the beaker? If they boiled off the extra water and they boiled off the extra HCl, what will be left in there is simply the zinc atoms, the chlorine atoms, and of course the beaker itself. Well, they already know how much the zinc combined with the beaker is. They have that written down. So all they have to do is convert this back into grams. That number of atoms of chlorine, and it's this exact same math backwards. And we got chlorine, 35.453 grams. Okay, still got this on my calculator. Okay, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 35.453. Just the chlorine atoms that came on board should weigh 1.08 grams. So they go ahead and add that 1.08 grams of chlorine atoms to how much the beaker and the zinc weighed before they did any of this, and they get their final mass. By the time they finish that, we've got this, and um, I've got a set of beaker tongs here. I want to show you something that's kind of interesting. Again, this is. This is just finishing, so it's perfect timing. What I actually have in here, right here, is the zinc chloride. It was in the molten state. What was actually there in the liquid was actually molten zinc chloride. It has a rather low melting point. It solidifies. I haven't let it cool for a while, about two minutes, not too much longer than that. And then they weigh it, and literally, when they come to weigh it, they have to weigh it in front of me on a on a scale at the front of the room, and they have their paper there, and they're saying from the calculations they did in the original beaker, of course this won't work because I changed beakers and stuff, but that beaker, the zinc atoms and the chlorine atoms all combined will weigh 111.24 grams. We go ahead, we set it on the scale, we set it on the scale like that, and their grade is based on how close that mass is to the target they established, so I call it a target lab. Okay, so a nice lab that deals with a nice reaction between zinc and chlorine. Usually we use that reaction for collecting hydrogen gas, but here we're using it to recover the zinc chloride. Now a word about this, zinc chloride is also quite hygroscopic. What that means is at room temperature it tends to absorb moisture from the room. So this is not one you could do now, let it cool for a half an hour and then go away because you'll find yourself with a puddle in the bottom as moisture from the air comes and is absorbed by that. So about two minutes after the time they take off the hot plate, they can weigh it and get a good result for it. So that's a nice little, I call it a stoichiometry lab, but I avoided a balanced equation. It really is just a nice mole target lab. Thank you.